Hey folks, welcome to Affiliate Nerd Out. I am your nerd orator, Dustin House, spreading that good word about affiliate marketing. You're going to find me here every Thursday at 1215 Pacific Time. Put it on your calendar and join me. And my special guest today is Greg Jeffries, an old friend in the industry. Greg, welcome to the Nerdatorium, sir. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Yeah, you got it, bud. Like, we, we come from a um maybe a 10-year relationship at this point i was working at wp engine and I, I found you out in the abyss and then i met you at a uh an affiliate summit events at uh in austin i, I believe like we were hanging out in austin and we saw or maybe it was a uh, david's event i forgot what those things were um yeah the yeah, uh, internet marketing party, probably. There you go, internet marketing party. That's yeah. where I met you, and and we uh, we had a few drinks and we talked, and uh, you were doing really well back then, and and killing it. So, uh, glad we had that opportunity. Uh, if you would like to be in Greg's seat, come and join me in the Nerdatorium. Go to dustinhouse.com slash nerd and put in a topic that you would like to talk about. Today's topic is going to be all about AI, affiliate marketing. Greg is on the affiliate and publisher side of things, and we're going to get this unique perspective of what he's seeing going on in the industry. And our question of the day is, what tools are you suggesting to your affiliate partners out there? Um, that's not for you, Greg. That's not for you to answer. That's okay. that's, that's okay. for the, the public. I want to get some, uh, some chat <laughs> going in the chat lines. <laughs> There's so many, it's hard to narrow them down. Uh, all right, let's 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 get started with this, Greg. Who are you? Who am I? So, uh, yeah, um, I guess I'll start from like my, about 2017 or 2016 or so. That's, that's when things started to get, I started to get traction. Okay. So um, where I found my traction was like, SEO and affiliate through uh, affiliate marketing using SEO. So, um, cause I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have enough money coming in from a job. So I would leverage like credit cards and stuff. So the, the okay. credit cards could buy me time or at least the opportunity to experiment a little bit and give me a little bit of wiggle room, but I didn't have the time i mean the money to um invest in like paid traffic and like high ticket mentors and things like that so um yeah just sort of settled into seo and i know that could be like overwhelming and hard and slow and expensive to some people but um it just felt right once things once i got enough information in that space because there's so much that changes in this space and i identified like my personality is like, I didn't, I didn't, I just got tired of trying to keep up, trying to keep up. And like, I found this place with an SEO that it's like, okay, cool. Once, once you understand certain fundamentals, you know, SEO has been one of those few things that has basically been there since the beginning of the internet. So that gave me a lot of peace. I was like, okay, cool. Like I can just, relax and just do do this these same steps consistently and then i'll get a result uh, get results and the results that it produces uh, is you're building like a, a passive income snowball which is essentially what people are working towards at a, a nine to five job to for retirement so i was like well i'm basically kind of leapfrogging my way to retirement in a much shorter amount mm. of time um, because you're the hook, I call it putting hooks in the water out there, your pieces of content, the more pieces of content you have out there, they're like little digital real estate and they can be making, uh, money for you, you know, while you sleep or whatever. Yeah. So it takes a little effort on the front end, but like it really in the grand scheme of things, I mean, I mean, tw I say just to give people a realistic expectation, 12 months or less, but uh, to see some decent traction, but honestly, it takes about six months or less if, and that's even, that's just like, I don't know if I can curse or whatever, but like half doing a half, ass is fine. Yeah. Okay. Half ass in it, you know, like, so I'm not saying like eight hours a day or 16 hours a day, seven days a week. No, cause nobody has that time. So like, uh, I, neither did I, but, um, 
I know that's a long winded explanation, but like, yeah, I, I settled in, I've done a lot of different things. Most all of them have worked. Um, so for <laughs> anybody just getting started and is like doubting, is this a scam? Is this a scam? Like I would say like 95% of things I've ever done worked. Um, it's just the, the, the scale at which it works was very dependent on how much consistency I, I put in. So I've like made some money doing almost everything I've ever tried. Um, yeah. so hopefully that gives people hope that are just getting started. Like, well, is this going to work? Is this going to work? Like it all works pretty yeah. much. Um, so, but SEO is kind of where I settled. And so, yeah, the, there, there are some scammier folks out there trying to, uh, you know, teach people how to make a million dollars very quickly, which is uh, right. they, not they, great. They, yeah. And then they don't give you the, context like maybe it is true today like right now but they left out the last nine years of their journey sure. <laughs> so like very important uh, <laughs> uh and where where did you get your learnings did you find a pat flynn or or some kind of mentor that that helped you get your start in this or did you start in affiliate marketing with a job mm -mm, no um so yeah, mostly through the school of hard knocks and like trying to uh, sift through courses and uh -huh. free information and, um, you know, didn't have money again. So like black hat sites, so like trying to get get access to this, these information products because I didn't have the money. And then um, I, actually I did like once I figured out that I was interested in SEO, I, I think it was 23. 13 or so, which like looking back again, all, I, I guess when you're younger time, it, it really does expand. And when you're older, it compresses because I came out to Austin in, in the fall of 2010. By 2012 or 2013, I had figured out like this was after testing trial and error, which felt like an eternity, so many different things. And I remember thinking, well, okay, like I, I don't do very well at jobs, but if I am going to get a job, I, I think I could, I think I could be in a role like an SEO job. So there were like SEO manager, SEO specialist jobs. So I bit the bullet and I was like, you know what? Okay. I guess I'll, I guess I'll try to go get a job or something. So I sent out a message to every single SEO company in Austin, I got one reply or I got one, one person that was like, you know, I'll help you. And I was asking them, I said, like, I just want to understand how SEO works. Cause if you, if all you guys are in business, surely y'all have to know how it works. Right. Because <laughs> I was going through all these courses, trying to figure out how does it work? How does it really work? And if you have a business around it, there, there has to be some logic to it, right? It can't just be a mystery. And um, there was this one solo guy that was like, yeah, I work for myself. I like your proposal. I'm bored and I work from home. So um, yeah, let's meet up for coffee. And he basically laid out, he, he explained things in a way that actually made sense to me. And I was like, oh, this is, this is what I needed. Like, so that, that was a big piece of the puzzle um, for me. And, um, I didn't wind up, you know, I've never had an SEO job, but, um, he gave me some very useful information that was like, it just really clarified things. And cause again, it, it's like the wild west in these courses and stuff. And, and it's always about like the latest, greatest WordPress plugin. And you're like, am I doing it right? I don't even know what I'm doing. And so it, you know, if somebody has clients and those clients are paying them consistently, they have to be getting them some sort of result. Right. You know, so I was like, I, I want to learn from these people that are supposedly doing this and getting results. And uh, so, yeah, uh, that that was a crucial like turning point. So that was in like 2013 or 2012 or something. Okay. And um, and it took about a couple more years before me to um, gain the confidence to quit my job. So I quit my job in the fall, of, in like December of 2016. 
And um, but that year was the first year that I had the courage to finally go to my first internet marketing events. And uh, cause I was like, I, you know, just limiting beliefs. I don't have time. I don't have the money, blah, blah, blah. And it didn't, but like I was, but I had credit cards. So I was, hmm. I had the leverage to get there because I was spending it on like $97 courses and $197 courses trying to learn this stuff. And um, I made up for lost time. So that in 2016, I went to like four different live events. So, and it was, that helped a lot too, just getting in proximity to other people that I knew were doing this stuff. It was because they're not going to like lie and, you know, BS you to your face. Like uh, these are people that saw online and like you meet them in person and they're off, you know, what I've found is that they're often going to tell you the truth. Okay. It's like, and I realize that these people are no smarter than me. They're about the same age as me. So if they can do it, like first off, like what's the difference between them and me? And what I, I met two SEOs specifically affiliate SEOs. And I was just kind of drilling them with questions like, you know, what about this? What about this? What about this? And they're like, I don't really do that. Mm. And, and I was like, Whoa. So my conclusion was they, the, all the things that I was stressing out over, they didn't even concern themselves with. So they, but they, they put in a massive effort on the handful of things that they did understand. Okay. And I was like, Oh, okay. So like, basically I was trying to do things right whatever that means, you know, because, and I think school kind of messed up my mind because it, the public school system trains us to memorize and regurgitate, memorize and recite. And so we've got right answers and wrong answers, but when it comes to life and business and whatever SEO, there's really no like right answer because everybody has their own proprietary process. Right. So you just have to <sighs> believe that like you've got, the eight, like the 80, 20 rule, like and most of this process is sound. Maybe there's a few things that are not as efficient as they could be. But if I keep doing these 10 things in this order repeatedly, I will get consistent. Yeah, results. man, that is, that is a smart strategy. And I'm always preaching, you know, going out and getting a mentor to help expedite your process of learning and learning from their mistakes more than like learning what's working exactly right now and like, you know, adapting to their, their spin of things and then making your own adjustments. I think it's super smart. And that one of those things you got right was uh, the way I found you, I think was the click funnels dream car. You were listed on like, you figured out how to way, win your way to a dream car. Tell me about that experience that you went through. Yeah, it's crazy. And like the way I did it, people say that it can't be done, but it's like, well, I, I did it. So, um, <laughs> but um, which I did it with SEO. I did it with long form or not long form, but l l content targeted to long tail keywords and okay. specifically about uh, you, you, with YouTube videos back in the day. Um, so like, I did like the whatever longest, slowest, hardest, most ineffective way to do affiliate marketing or whatever. And, and it worked, you know, so like I have these results and then I have all these very experienced people saying that you didn't do this and that mm. you didn't do it this way. I'm like, it's literally, well, I don't know what else to say because I'm not very good at paid traffic. Um, so like, this is what I did. You can choose to believe me or not. And not only did it work for me, because that would be, it, it should work for me. It's like my own process, but I've taught it to others. And there's been multiple people that have used my same process to also qualify for the dream car with click funnels and also make over six figures. And some people like six figures a year. So it's not, and that kind of ties into one of my philosophies, which is like, there is no such thing as competition. Like there's whoever wants to make money can, and it doesn't matter just because I won the dream car with click funnels with SEO doesn't mean that a hundred other people can't hmm. like, I think we get trapped in this belief of like, Oh, well, because Greg did it. I mean, there's less 
uh, more competition for the rest of us. Like, no, there's new, there's YouTube YouTube uh, channels that pop up every single day that I've never heard of that have either over a hundred thousand subscribers or what really blows my mind is the ones that have over a million. I'm like, I don't know who this person is. You know, there, there's literally so many channels out there that have so many subscribers. Millions, yeah. it, it, and, and some people might say, well, they may have bought some of those subscribers. So that's still a lot of <laughs> fake accounts or whatever. <laughs> you like the, 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 the YouTube play button, the subscribers may be fake, but the YouTube play button is real. So like, ah. you know, anyway, yeah, there's, there's no comp, no competition. Anybody that wants this can have it. Um, and you'll start to see that and understand it once you do it. But if, if, if anybody that's watching this is like starting out, as long as you sit on the sidelines and you're not doing anything, well, you're just going to get more of those results, which <laughs> You know, like very, very oh, this, true. Doesn't work, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. It's like, well, I mean, you're saying that as I'm doing this. So like I am getting results, doing the thing I'm telling you, you ask for the answers and I give it to you and you say that incorrect. It's like, well, which of us has results? <laughs> you know? So you took those results and that, and you started building out your own community. And I know you've had a really great following out there of folks trying to learn SEO from your style and status. Um, Wondering if you have any thoughts on what's going on out there with SEO. I've I've heard nightmare stories where people have fallen off the cliff in the last couple of months with affiliate sites. And what are you seeing out there? I I'm not super close to all those people and their results and stuff, but there's always going to be like a an adjustment. It's like, it, and some people get hit and some people don't. Um, but I don't worry so much about that anymore because it's just part of the game. And so mm -hmm. you, and here's what people don't un understand. It's like SEO is a long game. So just because a site gets like hit today doesn't mean it can't bounce back in like two years or less. Okay. So it's not gone forever, you know, but people, but it is painful. You know, if you got like 30 grand a month coming in, pretty much hands-free and then pff, now you're at 300 a month and you're like oh, oh spaghetti is like that's not good at all and that that happens but it's just there's there there's only a couple of fundamentals about seo and when when which means there's only a couple of dials that google can really turn so i don't okay. really worry about like this algorithm talk or blah blah because blah, most of the things in the news and and what Google leaks out or whatever, it, it doesn't matter. Like, I mean, you got to think about where's this information coming from? Mm -hmm. Like they just want to scare you. And much like I, I have this phrase where I say the oftentimes where the places that we're told not to dig is where all the gold is buried. So if Google says, don't do this, that's usually what the people that are getting the best results are doing. And not only are they doing it, they're doing it on a massive scale. Hmm. So what they tell you they want you to do and what actually works are two different things. Okay. I, and that ties in nicely to that news and the Google leak that just came out just very recently. And yeah, what are your thoughts, your thoughts are like, do you think that they did this on purpose to like help people or to like hurt them? I, th I, I don't, I don't know, right. Like, like the right words, like it, it doesn't affect anything much like, but it, it, it it stirs up some drama um, because there's just so much opportunity out there. And for every person that says like, Oh, I got hit. There's, there's so many other like niches out there and long tail keywords and stuff and opportunities that like, I, 
I know that it's not going to be a, an issue because okay. they can't they can't police the whole internet at least not right now like at the same time and even it's funny like Google on their actual YouTube channel has some documentaries which I encourage people to look them up. It's like Google search explained like a documentary that they made and put on their channel. And they're literally telling you that how much they're struggling to keep up with and organize the content on the search engines, which is like, that's awesome to me because it just proves what I already knew, which is like you, you can't organize content faster than it's being produced, which okay. means, if you understand things like that, then you'll always be a couple steps ahead of the search engines because like they can't organize it and sift through it faster than you produce it. And, um, and then there's just not that many people on the planet that are actually doing affiliate marketing and specifically affiliate marketing using SEO. So there is like literally every, with, with my process, what I love about it is it's, and my approach, and I don't think you're going to find this in any other SEO course. It's it's what I call it has the three S's: simple, scalable, and sustainable. So, mm -hmm. it's, you know, you're you're just, you're not in any kind of race or competition with anybody except yourself. Like you're not really competing with anybody. Um, so just take your time and again, be disciplined, consistent, follow. Uh, everything pretty much just comes down to content and backlinks, content and backlinks. I mean, sure. it, it's just, that was there in the beginning. That's still here now. So all this stuff in the last like 10, 15 years of like social signals and social bookmarking sites, it's like, eh, you know, maybe they're a, te a temporary factor, but like what was there in the beginning of the internet hmm. content and backlinks, content and backlinks was video even there. Nope. Was, was images. Kind of, but they took up, it took a long time to load. So what, what's at the core of the internet? Like okay. content, content, backlinks, text, internet. And what that guy showed me, which this will, hopefully this will help some of your audiences doing SEO and stuff. that really connected the dots for me about SEO and just demystified it was he, he said it, Tim Berners-Lee, who's the guy that's credited with uh, developing HTML, he worked in academia. And so he was, he was uh, tasked with organizing the content, creating a system to organize the content on the internet. And he created like HTML. So the structure of HTML, if you look at the code, which I'm not really a programmer, but I, HTML is English, so it's not like hard to read. Um, but the form, the structure of HTML, it's got like a header, title, body. It's the same format as like MLA format, which is what mm -hmm. we used to write research papers and essays right. in. So you've got the content, you got the title, you got subheads, and then backlinks are citations. So cite what we would cite references and sources. So that explains why um, for many, many years, wikipedia was ranking so highly why because the front end which is the page that we would see mirrored the back end mirrored the mm. code it look we i mean the forever and ever wikipedia was like the first or second search result for any phrase out there why because it i mean it wasn't pretty but it was perfect it was perfectly formatted uh, that's why it ranked. It wasn't because I'm mean, sure they have lots of backlinks, but they have backlinks because of the content, because the content is what got it ranked. And then people started reference, citing it and referencing and link to it. So I know it's kind of nerdy, but like, man, once that, that made click for me, I was like, Oh, well, I don't have to, I don't have to worry about any SEO news now, now that I know how, yeah. You know the structure like none none of these wordpress plugins blah blah, blah it doesn't make any it doesn't matter anymore fundamentals fundamentals Fund are what matter just like in baseball and will clark was a, a master at it um all right so uh you mentioned backlinks any like quick tips you can give folks to like hey, what is your backlink strategy and like going out and getting these backlinks to your articles honestly so i'm just now getting around to like 
building of official backlink strategy, which so my um, strategy is just to buy them. So I, I say you can, you can build things, you can build it or you can buy it. Building okay. is the way, buying is the faster way. Um, the important thing to know about, uh, to keep in mind with backlinks is, um, and this is all kind of very logical if you think about it. So a backlink is just an, a vote in the eyes of Google. So there, Google only has three rules. Uh, be relevant, be popular, and don't be evil. And that comes like straight from Google. But uh, anyway, so be relevant is just the on-page optimization. So make sure your content is relevant to whatever you're trying to get it ranked for. Be popular is backlink. So basically, how many votes do you have from other sites uh, saying that you're popular? And so, and what you need to look for with like a quality backlink is is it coming from a site that uh, you ideally want that site that's linking to you to be talking about the something similar to what your site is about and also already have existing traffic so that's going to have that means that site has authority so you're basically getting like a more powerful endorsement and so that that information combined with like if you got a lot of backlink that meet those criteria you're gonna be your google's gonna see your site as an authority so that's all you need to remember when it comes to backlinks and there's lots of different places to buy them and again so that's another thing that google's like don't buy backlinks it's like well it works so oh. you know again the, the slow way is to like manually reach out and cold email people like, Hey, I just wrote this great article. I think it'd be really awesome if you link back to me and you do that times a billion times. I mean, how do you think that these sites, like if you look at canva.com, they have so many backlinks. How do you think they got those? They, I mean, they, I'm sure they have VC money, so they could have bought them, but I, th I think what they did because they have so many, because there's only so many that you can buy. They have a, whole content team that all they do all day long for years and years and years was like cold outreach for guest posts yeah so they have tons of like real authority quality backlinks they have a whole dedicated outreach team to achieve that so they're they're doing what i'm talking about but they're doing it on such a massive scale um so in the world of seo it's not that competitive I, I mean, affiliate marketing is not that com as competitive. Gotcha. So you don't have to worry like, oh, does my does, do I need ten thousand dollars a month for a budget for backlinks? No, you just need a couple of links and you're fine. Right, or, right. Because I, 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 I mean, re recently I got onto like Entrepreneur and I sent a backlink to Affy Stash and increased my domain authority by ten, like <laughs> instantly from a, a ninety domain authority. So. Um, I know the power and yeah, this is all all great stuff, man. Um, I want to take a minute to switch gears and we'll, we'll talk about AI. But before that, I want to hit up my sponsor and that is affiliate.com. And affiliate.com is super cool publisher tool, streamlining the entire affiliate marketing process by connecting publishers, merchants and affiliate networks on a unified platform. Publishers no longer need to log into multiple networks, struggle to find offers and worry about dead links. Affiliate.com has you covered, providing a single searchable database of over 1 billion products to manage and power affiliate commerce content. Publishers can easily find and promote relevant offers across dozens of networks, all gaining valuable insight through robust reporting and analytics. With Affiliate.com, e-commerce merchant and publisher relationships are optimized, allowing for seamless collaboration and maximizing that revenue. Publishers out there, uh, go check this out. Uh, they have a super easy JavaScript function for your WordPress site. It works like magic, just helping you add up-to-date CTAs with your blog posts. Go see it for yourself. Go to dustinhouse.com slash ACOM and help support my content making habits here all right switching gears a little bit here greg um you are 
into the AI space, and I think everybody essentially has to be at this point if you're going to survive. Um, yeah. What do you see AI doing and how it's affecting publishers right now? So, yeah, it took me a little while to process everything that was coming out because it was just so much so fast and it was change and that's just different. And but um, but I kind of predicted that for the last couple of years that I was like, something's coming, something's coming. I don't know what it is, but like when it when I see it, I'll know it. And um, it's all the stuff that we're seeing now. So I I'm not scared or anything like that. So I know there was like fear and in, in certain uh, areas of online publishing and stuff. I'm like, well, nothing to be afraid of. You, you just you got to embrace it or die basically. So um, sure. you just got to make peace with that. So all I see it is, is a means to do everything I was already doing better, faster and cheaper. Got it. So it's like, instead of hiring a, uh, a VA, now we've got AI. I mean, we can yeah. just hire, we can just hire a VA to manage the AI systems and stuff. Ooh. Okay. Instead instead of manually doing all this because a lot of the, a lot of stuff that we we do on only marketing uh it's 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 simple but it's tedious so that's where autumn ai combined with automations come in because it's these things are not they're they're mind-numbingly simple tasks they're not something that you want to do for eight hours and so that's why a lot of marketers would pass things off to vas and you know right. in other countries so they can pay them less Cause it's like, ah, uh, it's so stupid, like stupidly simple. You don't want to do that. It's not a high value task, but it's a essential to, you know, get all that content published or whatever. But with AI, uh, these tools now, they just, again, they do everything better, faster, cheaper. So, you know, it basically you're able to like, from a content standpoint, kind of saturate the internet faster. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and there's, you know, theories behind, you know, if your articles are AI written, Google's going to recognize that and penalize you in some kind of sense. Or are you under that belief? No. No. Okay. No, no. it doesn't make sense to me. Because, um, again, like the angle that I, here's my little, and I had to develop these philosophies you know so okay. that i can confidently say no i'm not worried and like why well here's why so um what i've observed from google over the years is that like their their number one goal for their search engine is to deliver the best quality results in the shortest amount of time so they want to deliver the best results fast um and so there, believe it or not, you know, there, there, there's a lot of searches. There's new searches happening every day. And again, the searches happen faster than the content is produced. So AI helps us keep up with that. But again, there's only so many SEOs out there. So there's still not going to be enough, enough content to match all the searches. But all that to say this, like, if you were Google, like, you you want to display some results uh, there. You can still search for very specific things today where there are zero results and that's a failure in the eyes of Google. Um, and so how, how we used to do what, um, what I teach now, what can be achieved now with AI, we kind of would create like this sloppy content, but mm -hmm. in, and some people might say, well, that's kind of like spam or whatever. It's like, mm, not in the eyes of Google, because if you were Google, would you rather return zero search results or some search results, even if those results are crappy? Some search results, because something is better than nothing. And then higher quality content is better than lower quality content. But AI can write high quality content, mm -hmm. very readable. So... If they can produce high, if AI can produce high quality content fast and basically fill up the holes in the search where there is no content or no quality content at all, why wouldn't Google index and rank that content? Okay. Very, Fair enough. Very simple. 
So, so you're utilizing AI to build some content and then you're having to edit it on the back end. That's kind of a lot of my strategy for like some of the filler words, essentially I'm, I'm doing a lot of the intro, like, I mean, all of the intros for every blog post that I do, but, um, and then the full review comes in and like helps me fill out some of that information. Um, are you using that same kind of strategy? Well, see, that's why I don't do client SEO because um, I don't I don't worry about any of that stuff. So I just like leave it as is because um, as long as that content is relevant, like I don't skim through it or read it because I, I just do things at such a high scale. So I'm I'm trying to create content for all the long tail keywords uh, of, around a product or niche, and so I just want to get the content produced. And the whole goal of that content is basically just filler now not not to create garbage or to spam the internet but to yeah. filler in the sense of like i call it putting hooks in the water so the more hooks i have the more fish i'm going to catch when yeah like the more people that's going to find it potentially which means the more people are going to land on my page and once they're on the page then i direct them where i want to go so yeah. maybe have a, a an overlay or a pop-up to capture their email or uh, get them to click on a button because uh, so the again I'm not trying to muddy up the internet with like crappy content because you can read through this stuff and it's actually probably better than I could come up on my with on my own but like my goal for these affiliate sites is to get them to the the, the site I'm trying to promote them to so that I can so that I can help the customer but I can also and it's a win 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 like the vendor wins if they buy the customer wins because we're basically a digital traffic director directing them to uh, the solution that they told us they were looking for. And then if they do uh, purchase that thing, then I get a commission as a result. Yeah. Of that. So, you know, again, I had to come up with all these philosophies, to, like justify what I'm doing. And it's like, is, is it, or am I a bad person? Like, no, you're, you're literally just, it, you're doing the work of a sales an, an in-person salesperson but you're doing it at scale you know because you can't be in a thousand places at once so that's what these pages of these websites are doing it's like oh you're looking for this very specific supplement you know you typed in this really long question well let me create a targeted piece of content for that and then like get you to this thing that you that's outside of your awareness right now. Like you, you, you have this question, but you don't know the answer. It might be this supplement that you've never heard of. Let mm -hmm. me introduce you to it. So, um, okay. like, so an example, like click funnels, for instance, like, yeah, obviously the people who are searching for click funnels are familiar with click funnels, but what are the people? There's a lot of people that probably need click funnels that don't know that phrase. So they're going to be searching for like best landing page designer. Sure tool so like then you can introduce them like hey th this is the thing you're looking for oh it actually has a name yeah so um, beautiful you're, you're helping people so you're just a digital traffic director a <laughs> digital traffic director that is a good title on linkedin like yeah <laughs> I, that that should be your your uh, your title as your like yeah, i love it, it. it doesn't sound very scammy so i was like <laughs> oh, I, feel, I feel good about this you know Fantastic. Well, I've uh, enjoyed learning from you throughout the years. Like your content has been great to help my SEO learning experience. And I know GaryJeffries.com is uh, is a great site for folks to get out that information. What do you have coming up next for you? Uh, yeah, just um, I'll, I'll probably put together a course on my updated process with this AI information. So my okay. fun fundamentals, the core process has not changed, but the advancements in AI, um, uh, you know, have they've come along. So I, I want to update that process, which is just going to, it's my goal in that information once I create it, which I'll put that on gregjeffries.com whenever that I release that, is to just simplify and streamline this process of making money online to really equip anybody that wants to do it and give them that opportunity because and uh, without making it so complicated like I want I want like teenagers to be able to go through this information because it yeah. is as hypey as this may sound it, it 
it really is to the point where it's click button and copy and paste and like it that we're, we're there now so it's it's that simple um if you know what to click and what to copy and paste it you don't you don't have to be a, i'm not an expert in all the niches i promote that i make money in and you don't have to be and you you don't have to outsource it to someone who is like ai takes care of that like they're the expert so um it's like uh Encyclopedia Britannica on steroids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. All right. So you got a course that, that's coming out soon to get all your thoughts on and uh, train the next generation out there. Are there any particular niches that you're specifically working on for your own blog content? I'll give people a, a tip and direction. So people always ask, like, what kind of offers you promote? Like, what's the best offers? And again, I had to like, distill what what down like what what are the top converting offers that i promote and have in common and what works best for seo so since seo does it's not an overnight thing um i try and gravitate towards products and services that are either evergreen high ticket or recurring or um physical products too mm -hmm like a desk, a chair, um, high ticket might be an information product, but it's higher ticket, which means you're going to earn higher commission. Recurring would be something like a SaaS, so like ClickFunnels. The benefit of that is you make a sale and every single month you're going to get recurring commissions so long as that person doesn't cancel. And then evergreen just means like the thing that you're putting effort into promoting is going to be around for a while. Like it's not Beanie Babies, you know, like it's, <laughs> Great. I mean, you know, you could you could make a lot of money in a short amount of time, but then what after that? You know, like it, I, I like to make money. If I'm going to put effort into something, I want to make money for years. Yes. Okay. So you choose your products wisely and making sure that uh, it's going to last for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. Gotcha. Loud and clear. All right. For um, those looking to connect with you and and uh, like you know pitch you on. <laughs> Being an affiliate of their brand, how do people connect with you here? You can just go to gregjeffries.com and I'll have like all my socials on there as well so people can find me there. Fantastic. Greg, really appreciate your time today, bud. Um, I know you're headed out on vacation and uh, thanks for squeezing me in and, um, and dropping all this knowledge for these folks. Absolutely. Thanks again for having me. All right, Greg, take care and, and folks keep on recruiting and we'll see you out there later.